All right, so today's video is a little bit different. We're gonna model something that isn't supposed to be exactly perfect. It's supposed to have some imperfections, which is a little different than what we usually do in SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So in today's video, we're gonna model a well. So this is something I've seen done with Blender, but I thought it would be fun to do in SketchUp just as kind of an exercise. So I'm gonna start by tapping the C key, single clicking, and then drawing a circle with a 24 inch radius. That means that the central hole here will be four feet wide. And then I'm gonna take the whole thing I'm going to offset it. Um, pay attention to the number of segments in here. So I'm going to click on this real quick. Notice how my segment count in my circle is 24. If I do 24 segments, that's probably going to work because that's going to allow me to do one, two, three um, blocks per quarter right here. But if you want more blocks or you want those blocks to be bigger, you can adjust the segment count in order to do that because we're using the segments in the circle in order to drive our blocks. But now what we wanna do is we wanna tap the F key. I'm gonna offset this out. Actually, I'm gonna offset it in a little bit because it feels like that well is getting a little bit wide. So, and we'll offset it in by maybe a value of like four inches or something like that, maybe six inches. So I'm gonna offset this in six inches right here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna save my model. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to model our blocks. And so we want our blocks to be different sizes, right? But I'm gonna use the segments in these circles in order to set up these blocks. So I'm gonna have a block here that's gonna go along two segments. And notice how I'm drawing a line from segment to segment right here. So for this one, maybe it's gonna be a little bit longer. So I might go from a midpoint to a midpoint. And then from this one, it might be a little bit shorter. So it's, notice how now I have basically three profiles of blocks right here. Well, I'm gonna take each one of them and I'm gonna make them a component. So I'm gonna call this one block one. I'm gonna call this one block two. I'm gonna double click this one. I'm gonna call this block three. So now I have three different blocks in here that I wanna model up. And then we're just gonna repeat those um, components over and over again to make our well. So I'm gonna start by push pulling this one up right here. And we're gonna say this one has a height of maybe five inches. So we'll type in a value of five right here. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna move the edges around in here to make these blocks look a little less uniform. And so the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna do a double click. Then I'm gonna do a shift click so that I have just the edges on this surface. And then I'm gonna use the move tool in copy mode and I'm gonna create two copies. So I'm gonna move this down here and then we're gonna type in divided by two and hit the enter key. Remember that you can activate copy mode by tapping the control key while the tool is active. Then I'm gonna do the same thing over here. So I'm gonna do a double click and then I'm just doing a shift double click and then I'm removing these faces. And then I'm just gonna use the move tool in copy mode to create copies just like this. So I'm gonna create a copy that goes here. And then for this one, I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna create a copy that goes here. And so what I'm doing is I'm adding geometric detail in here that I can move around because I don't want these blocks to be 100% uniform, right? What we want is we want these to have a little bit of up and down and other things like that. Well, the cool thing about this is we can use the move tool by tapping M and we can mouse over any of these vertices and we can just kind of move them around in order to adjust the faces. And so you may have to tap the left or right arrow keys in order to do this um, if it won't go the way that you want it to do. And so all I'm doing is I'm just moving these just a little bit to give me a little bit of imperfection in here, right? So I might move this around a little bit. And what I want is I want this block to not look like it's just like this uniform block in here. And I know the geometry looks a little bit scary, but it's, it's okay for what we're trying to do here. We're literally just trying to make this look like it's not a hundred percent perfect object in here. So I'm just gonna move this over. I'm gonna move this over and maybe over again, something like that. So just something so that I have a block in here that looks a little bit more like a block and a little bit less like a perfect piece of geometry. And you may wanna do the same thing on the back side over here. Now, one thing I wish this version of SketchUp had that it doesn't have is a tool for beveling the edges because I would really like to bevel off the edges in here, but we don't really have anything to do that in the free version. In the uh, pro version, you could use something like Fredo Corner or something like that. Um, there's also a tool called Inneroth Fractal Terrain Erode, which would allow you to actually like erode this down into a block, so this would be a lot easier. But for what we're doing here, this ought to work just fine. So now I'm gonna take this object and I'm gonna go into my display and I'm gonna scroll down 
So I'm gonna double click to get into my object, then I'm gonna select all my edges in here, and I just want to smooth and soften these edges. And you can adjust this if those aren't, um, if they're not softening using this angle function. But now what I've got is I've got this non-uniform block in here. And so now I wanna do the same thing right here. So push, pull up, add a couple edge loops with the move tool. And so this one's a bit trickier because it's got an extra piece in here. So you might have to manually model in at least one loop in here. And a loop is just additional geometric detail. So SketchUp doesn't have tools built in for modeling loops in this way. So we're just kind of working around this a little bit. But again, we're just doing the same thing, right? Where we're just adding edges in here to split up our faces and we can use those edges to adjust the way that our blocks look. And so I might come over here and hide this first block that we created right here. And again, none of this has to be perfect. We're literally just adding geometry in here um, so that we can move this box around. And the more geometry we have in here, the more control we have over the way the whole thing deforms. And so again, I'm just gonna come in here and move a bunch of random points around um, just so we don't have things looking uniform. And one of the other things you can do too is you can also select faces and move them around. So I might select this face and move it back on like the green axis and notice how that kind of moves everything around in here. And so the other thing you can do that might make this a little faster is you could also come in here and select a couple different edges and move them. So if I select like these three edges and then move them back, notice how this whole thing is going to adjust a little bit. So there's a few different ways that you can do this in order to add this uh, non-uniformity, if that's what we wanna call this. And again, remember if you try to move something and it won't move along a certain axis, try tapping the left or right arrow keys with the selected, just like this. And then we'll soften and smooth the edges just like this. And we may want to come in here and unhide our geometry just to kind of see if everything is lining up, if we have any overlaps. So notice right here, for example, our, uh, our rock is kind of overlapping with the other one. So I might come in here and just use the scale tool in order to adjust this a little bit. Just enough so that our faces aren't really like intersecting with each other. And then we'll do the same thing with this one. I'm really going to speed this one up. All right, so now we've got our three base stones created in here, right? Well, now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use the uh, rotate tool in copy mode. So I'm gonna select these three objects, tap the Q key, and then single click, and I'm gonna tap control with this active in order to copy these. So I've tapped control in order to create a copy, and I've uh, set that angle to 90 degrees, and then I'm gonna type in times three, and I'm gonna hit the enter key. So now what I wanna do is I wanna take these blocks and I'm gonna copy them again. Right, and we can go ahead and we can get rid of our circle on the base or we can just group it so that it doesn't merge with anything. Um, but what I wanna do now is I wanna select my line of rocks right here. I'm gonna use the move tool in copy mode and I want to move them up like this. And I wanna rotate them using the rotate tool so that they're not uniform. Then I may also scale this in just a bit. So I might tap the control key and then scale this just a little bit so that this line of rocks is a little bit smaller than the line of rocks beneath it. But then I'm just going to do the same thing. And you might take this whole thing and just select it and make it a component and call it rock rope. Then we're going to use the move tool in copy mode. Or we're going to copy it up again. Like this. We'll rotate it again, and we'll copy it up one more time, like this. And then same thing, we'll just rotate it like this. And so what's cool about this is because we've done this kind of rotationally, and I've got some edges kind of showing through here, or some points kind of showing through here, that I may want to try to erase if I can get to them, um, because they show up and they show kind of where things are, um, they, they show where things are repeating. So I want to get rid of those 
right here. But now if you look at this, we've got this well that's completely non-uniform and organic looking inside of SketchUp. And then from here, we could do a lot of different things, right? Like for example, I can tap that rectangle tool and then I'm gonna tap control to go into four cent or from center mode. And I'm gonna draw a post in here that's maybe like, we'll say five and a half by five and a half. So 5.5 comma 5.5. And so that's gonna give us a post over here that we can use in order to model out a little roof. So we're gonna model this post up. And that post actually feels a little bit big. So I'm just gonna scale this down, maybe like 0.75 or something like that. Um, the, the nice thing about this kind of modeling is you don't have to be 100% precise. But I'm just going to push pull this up so that I have a post here on the side. I'm gonna triple click and I'm gonna make it a component. And we're gonna call this end post. And so now I'm going to take this whole thing, use the move tool in copy mode, and I'm going to create a copy right here. And one thing we can do is we can do the same thing we did with our well down here, or we can add a little bit of detail. So I'm just going to select this top set of edges and I'll deselect the actual face, but then I'll just use the move tool in copy mode, so tap control to create that copy, then we'll do a divided by three, maybe, to create these different copies. Well, then you can come in here and you can just scale them and rotate them a bit. And so notice how I had that selected in here, and I'm just gonna rotate this maybe like two degrees or three degrees, just to give this a little extra detail, but then you can also like move these loops around a little bit. And again, what we're going for here is we're just going for a little bit of warp. We're going for something that isn't 100% uniform. Then we'll just take the whole thing, double click on it, and we'll smooth the edges like this. And if these look a little too uniform, you might just take the other one and just rotate it a little bit and maybe flip it using the scale tool. So just tap the S key, single click, and then hit control and flip it like this. So now you've got these two kind of non-uniform posts in here. Then you can model a post across the top. And a lot of the time what I'll do is I'll take a face like this, I'll do a control C, and then I'll click out of the group and I'll look for paste in place by clicking on the little dog right here. And then I can just rotate this up because I'm not sure what the final, um, I'm not sure what the final dimensions of this post ended up looking like. But now I'm just gonna push pull this across. Like this. And again, we'll just use the move tool in copy mode. And we'll just move our vertices around on this one just a little bit. so that the whole thing doesn't look 100% uniform. All right, and then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little like a turning piece right here. So something that we might use in order to like bring the bucket up out of the well. So I'm just gonna start by drawing a circle right here. And in this case, we might wanna draw this circle and then adjust it so that it has less segments. So I might take this and bring it down to like eight segments or something like that. So if I do that and then I push pull this, notice how this is less of a circle and more of like a, uh, almost like a octagonal shape. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this whole thing across like this. So I'm just gonna push pull it all the way across. And if you push pull it too far, you can just move it back like this. But basically what we've done is we've created this shape in here. And so I'm gonna do the same thing here where I push pull this out and then I'm just gonna take the end. I'm gonna use the move tool in copy mode and move it in here. Do a divided by three to add that geometry. And I'm just gonna kind of scale it a little bit. Again, so it just doesn't look perfect. So this one here, I might take the edge loop and move it over not a ton, just a tad, maybe up and down just a little. Again, we just don't want it to look like we've got this like perfect piece of wood in here, right? And then from here, I might push pull this out a little further. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna model out the handle. And so I'm gonna start by taking this whole thing, triple clicking on it and grouping it. But then I'm just gonna draw a circle 
that's a little bit bigger. Use the move tool in copy mode and copy this down. And then I'm going to scale it down like this. And then I'm just going to find the two edges in here and just draw a line between these two edges in order to create a surface. So now I have a surface that I can push pull this way to give it some thickness. And notice how if this ever comes out hollow, you can tap the control key in order to give it thickness. But then I'm also going to push pull this piece here and this piece here just by double clicking. But then I'm also going to take this face down here. I'm going to offset it in. And then I'm going to push pull this out so that I've got a little handle in here. Then I'm going to take the whole thing, triple click on it, and I'm going to group it. And I'm just going to move it over just like this. And so we're almost done. Let's just model out a little rope. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click in here. I'm going to do a control C to copy this from inside the group. And then I'm going to do a paste in place. And then I'm going to move this over. I just want to move it in the red axis so that we're kind of close right here. And so what we want to do in this situation is we want to offset this out a little bit to kind of simulate a piece of rope, right? So we're going to push pull this out like this. And then we can use the push pull tool to give that thickness. So I can push pull it like this. And I'm just going to take the whole thing. I'm going to select it, right click on it, and I'm going to make it make it a component and I'm going to call it rope loop. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the move tool in copy mode and create a few copies of this, right? So I'll make a close copy here and then type in like times four or times eight or something like that. And then for these, I'm going to make it very simple. I'm just going to kind of scale them a little bit so that they're not uniform. And so we've got our rope loops here. And then what I might do is I'm just going to take this end piece again. I'm going to select it and I'm going to do a control C. I'm going to click out of the group. And I'm going to do a paste in place. And this time I'm going to rotate it using the Q key. So I'm going to tap Q. I'm going to rotate it like this. And then I'm going to push pull it down to like the bottom of our well. And in this case, I'm going to take that whole thing and I'm going to scale it in just a little bit because it's a little too wide. It looks kind of funny for a rope being that big. But now I can just move this over. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. That's not really what we're going for in this tutorial. But now we've got this rope going down into our well right here. And then for this kind of thing, because it's a little more low poly and less detail, what we might do is we might just use colors in order to color these things. So I might go into the material section and select maybe like this brown material for my wood. And then maybe like a slightly lighter brown material for uh, my pieces right here. So I might go into my colors and find something close to this, but not exactly the same for my handle. And then maybe something lighter, like this kind of like light tan or something like that for my rope. And I might take all of my rope, select it, Whoops, I'm going to put this all in a group and I'm just going to select all of this and I'm going to put it in a group so that I can just apply materials to it really quickly. So we might want something maybe more like this for our rope. And then for our stones, what we can do is we can come in here and we can just use kind of like grays and maybe a little bit of pink or something like that, or maybe something with a little red in it. But notice how we only have to do three of these because these are components. So we can just come in here and we can just select the different gray colors and just apply them to our blocks like this. So something like this. So if we look at our well, now we've got this like alternating color appearance inside of here. If you have any questions about anything we talked about, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. I'll link to the next video in this series on this page as soon as it's ready to go. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.